Uh, ready? Recording? Ready. Everybody yeah. ready? Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Early yep. morning, I have coffee. You have coffee? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I'm coffee out. <laughs> I have water. You know. mm. uh, anyway, are we on? Oh, here we We're go. We're on. <laughs> this is Due to Underwhelming Demand, the podcast that is not live this week no which is good because we don't have to be on our best behavior do we sound better so strap yourself in <laughs> that was I us on ready. our best behavior i think i don't know was it i don't i don't well, know i guess i don't i hope everyone had fun if you came to the live show thank you very much yeah, yeah. okay was, are you talking fun. to me because i'm not, not oh much. yeah you too <laughs> thanks for coming dave I, I thanks for showing that, up i didn't have that much fun <laughs> um <laughs> no it was actually all right it was good it yeah. was fun Uh, All right, this uh, we are Dave, Rachel, and Foreman, and the podcast brought to you uh, today. Thank you very much to the Thistle Theater. Yes. Also, ENP Equine. Wait till you hear about this. New. And just for Foreman. Just for Foreman. And Melissa Photography. Shout out to Melissa who came to our live broadcast. Yes, uh, she did. Appreciate that. Also, at the live uh, broadcast, you got to meet uh, my friends Jan and John Everett. Yep, we did. Yeah. Uh, they were anxious to actually meet you guys in person. Well, I was anxious to meet them, too, because yeah. they, uh, I've heard so much about them. And so finally I got to meet them in person, which was really nice. Okay. And everyone everyone listened to them. John uh, asked if we were all wearing pants. And <laughs> yeah, very nice of John to do that. They brought their book as a giveaway yeah. that mm-hmm. they, because well, they've helped us out as a sponsor before. As yes. Well. yes, they have. Uh, and, John, uh, we I had set it up with me beforehand that if if no one wanted to ask us a question. Right. He was there for me. I, he would, <laughs> okay. If he was going to be oh. my setup guy, but it turns okay. out we, a, we got we did get a few questions, so it wasn't all that bad. Right. Anyway, good friends. And Jan just uh, in between the live broadcast and this recording celebrated a birthday. Oh, happy birthday! Yes. Happy oh, that's birthday. cool. Yeah, we good. got invited to a little uh, birthday celebration uh, the day of her birthday. We had a nice time. Yep. And uh, also. Uh, 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 my wife uh, made the cake for the uh, celebration. Cake was unbelievable. Really? Wow. What yes. kind of cake was it? It was, and I'd never, I'd heard of it before, but we didn't really know what it was. Devil's food cake. Do you know what that is? Yeah, oh. it's like a chocolate, chocolate cake. It's a chocolate cake. Sure. Yeah. Um, but not everybody sells a devil. Like, it's hard to buy one is unless it? you pre order it or. Oh, well, they have boxed cakes that are devil's food cake. Do they? Yeah. Anyway, this was uh, homemade and really good. Good. Just saying. Just awesome. saying. Shout awesome. out to Jana. It was really. Very good. It was top notch. Yeah, awesome. Whether we ever get another one, I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sneezing over here. <laughs> okay. Okay. I tried to that's mute, nice. but it didn't, didn't yeah, happen fast that's, enough. That's nice. Okay. Well, gazoon tight. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, I wanted to talk about uh, wh- while we were having. Uh, uh, this lovely birthday dinner mm-hmm. and then cake afterwards, it came to our attention. Uh, one of the gifts that uh, John bought Jan, and I and I thought that I would uh, see how you guys reacted to what he got her. Okay. He bought her um, a scale. Like, you know. What? A scale. For like, food, right? No, 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 no. no. To uh, stand A nice, on. brand new, really fancy, digital uh, scale. Are they married? <laughs> they were. Yes, they're married. <laughs> they're married. They're yes. still married? They're, yes. Well, it's only been a few days, I gather. No, Lawyers still take married. time. Everything's fine as they far still, as I know. He's Lawyers still alive. take time. Yes. He's, he's still alive as far right. as I know. This they're reminds the same me place? of, have you seen the Instagrams where the man does something and then and then it cuts to, um, you know, uh, Mariah Carey singing and like a, a death notice of the guy? <laughs> No, I haven't that seen reminds that. me of that. I don't. I don't really <laughs> tend to look at anything. John, Mariah nineteen sixty-eight to twenty twenty-four. I don't. Or do whatever. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as soon as we found that out, and uh, he uh, gave a sort of uh, half-hearted explanation as to why he mm-hmm. thought it was a great idea. Right. Let me preface this by saying he he went all out. He gave her an 
an elaborate breakfast in bed thing. There were other gifts okay. involved. A lot of these other gifts involve food, and then out comes the scale. Hmm. Right. Well, that's... I don't know at what point. I wasn't there for when the scale right. was uh, was Presented? given. I wasn't there for. I wasn't there for the reaction uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. on the scale. Here's what I know. The, what little I know is that someone, a, an acquaintance, a friend, someone they see on a regular basis has a brand new digital scale and uh, Jan had been uh, using uh, and and must have remarked, well, you got this really nice scale or something. And oh, so, you know, the light bulb goes off in the man's head. Well, that would be a good gift. No, you think? turn it off. Turn not, off the not bulb. A, not as a gift. You can go out and buy that any day, like on a Monday, Tuesday, any day, not a birthday. That's not a not birthday? A, no. What about or Christmas? Christmas? No. Mother's no. Day? No. It's not a gift. No, it's that's, not. Why that's is not it a gift? gift. Well, because I think you're putting your marriage in jeopardy um, <laughs> by giving yeah. that as a gift. <laughs> you <laughs> are. You'd better have a really good explanation if you're giving someone a, a weigh scale for their weight and not for, like, you know, food in the kitchen. <laughs> So you're like, I need to know how many, you a, a how many food grams in the kitchen of beans scale. I'm putting in this soup. That's, yeah, if I you buy you that, buy that, I don't think I don't think you're going to be too thrilled with that either. No, no, no you're right, you're right. But it's so, better than the alternative. If I'm going to choose it? between the two types of scales, well, you don't want a scale, is what you're suggesting. Not, no, not for my birthday. No, no. <laughs> if I have a when certain would, type would. of garden that I'm growing, then I might need a certain type of scale. Otherwise, no thanks. Oh, that. Oh, kind I see. Of scale. Okay, sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's you a different could get a scale too. for that. Right. That's a completely but then it might thing. be a business expense, and that's a write-off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfectly so legal now. Um, you don't need a license for that. I mean, it's perfectly. That's true. Legal. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So you can write that Personal off. Personal use. Yeah. yeah. You Personal can... use. You exactly. So what stuff. did um, Jan say about she was the scale? Uh, to my knowledge, she seemed to be in a, uh, you know, uh, she was very okay much a birthday mood. She was happy. Really? Everything was good. Okay. Uh, we had a good laugh about it. I will say sure. that. Yes. We <laughs> did. We uh, we had a pretty good laugh. Uh-huh. We, uh, you know, and I. Um, what well, was she had reaction? time to process. Like, you weren't there when it was initially presented. When you then arrived, did John have, like, a scale-shaped gash on the side of his face? No, or? he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he didn't. He had to, no, it was fine. Bruise on his everything leg or fine. something. Yeah, no, that corner I, matches the corner of the scale. Yes, that's, yeah. a, that's a same well, degree here, angle. Look, I'm here to tell you, I, I, I wasn't the one who did that, but I, you know, I can vouch for my friend John. He gave his wife a scale and appears to have gotten away with it. Well, yes, didn't you um, once give your wife a vacuum? Yes, she asked for it. She wanted a new vacuum for yeah. Christmas, right. and uh, we had a whole conversation about that. Yes, and I actually yeah. um, said that to John. You know, I've had that conversation with John, and John, you know, wasn't like she uh, uh, requested a scale. He just was trying okay. to guess at something what she that might like. She seemed enamored with that somebody else had, so he thought, "Well, what a great idea!" I will give him half points for. <laughs> For noticing what she's saying and mm-hmm. remarking on and remembering yes. Yes. that she might like that. Very good at that, actually. But then Very the other attentive. half of the points got taken away because he gave it to her as a gift. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, he's not going to sell it to her, so giving well, it to her Well, just buy it is... and bring it home. Be like, look what I got, just as a, you know. A, I just, you know, it's Wednesday. Do, yeah. Here's do a you, scale. Sure. Do either yeah. of you yeah. have a scale at home? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How did that scale get there? Don't know, actually. Uh, I appeared. think we bought it when we bought our first house. We're like, oh, we need a scale. And then there was one on sale at Canadian Tire, and so I bought it. Oh. Myself. Okay. Because uh, we didn't I, have one in the house. Well, before um, uh, I was in the bathroom, just uh, done showering and uh, before the podcast this morning, before our taping. Thank you and, for uh, showering before uh, this no episode. Problem. Thank you. Uh, I always like to do that before. Uh, yes. You know, I do a podcast. Mm. And I looked down and there's a scale, nice new digital scale in our bathroom, which we bought. Uh, it was on the, uh, you're always, you're a sucker at Costco if you buy the stuff that they put out on the end. And we bought, we walked by it. There it was. And we went, oh, well, let's get that. 
I it's usually want, a good deal. Yeah, it's usually sure. a pretty good deal, and yeah. there it is. And so that's how that arrived in our house. Okay. i pretty sure with the vacuum, that's what she wanted. We talked about it. We went through the whole thing. I made sure she had other gifts, and uh, I actually wanted somebody who listened got me a great deal on a vacuum, so it all worked out great. <laughs> oh, scale, yes, I recall I don't know. that. You had to go, okay, that's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. I bought myself a new vacuum recently, and Jeremy and I had discussed, uh, because I wanted a Dyson stick vac, because I didn't have a, I just wanted a stick vac that was easy, because otherwise we have a a central vac, and you got to get out the hose and all the parts, and it's kind of annoying to get it out, but I'm like, if I just want to vacuum the kitchen quickly, I want a stick vac, and I want a Dyson, and there was one on sale, and I, and Jeremy's like, well, why don't we get that for Christmas, and I'm like, nah, I'm just going to buy it now, (laughs) like, I don't want to get, that's not a gift, like, I'm just going to go buy it. So I did. Yeah. I bought myself a stick vac. Yeah, but it okay. wasn't a gift. Okay. It might have been a gift. Okay. But then well, I thought of Dave and I was like, do I want a vacuum for Christmas? No, you no don't. I don't. <laughs> well, I wouldn't oh, nope. want a vacuum for Christmas. <laughs> so I'm just going to buy it for myself. I wouldn't want it. I, yeah. I um, you know, don't get me any power tools for Christmas. Don't do that. No. I mean, right. No, yeah. I don't want that either. We you learned can... quickly, and I've said this many times before, we learned quickly as I think teenagers never to buy my mom kitchen appliances for Christmas. (laughs) Well, if you have to learn through trial and error, that's not good. No. And the stage in life we're at right now is that uh, for Christmas, Ashley and I are getting each other winter tires out of our vacation fund. (laughs) That's boring. Sad. That is sad. Very sad. That is sad. Yeah. You already have a scale, so what else can you do? What else do you need? (laughs) Right. We have everything else. Exactly. This is Due to Underwhelming Demand. It's a podcast. It's Dave, Rachel, and Foreman. And it's brought to you this time around by the Thistle Theater once again. They have a, uh, a production that uh, is on right now. Yes, they do. It's called The Ladies Foursome, and it's by Norm Foster. And it's at uh, it's in Embro, the Thistle Theater, in case you don't know where it is. Um, they actually sent me a couple of updates. Uh, they said, uh, so this is from John, who I think is the, he's the producer of mm-hmm. the ladies for some. He says, right. I know Dave has made a point a couple of times on the podcast uh, between women and men on a golf course and how it would be very different. I don't disagree. However, he might be interested to know that Norm Foster also wrote a play called The Foursome, which essentially tells that story. What happens when four old male friends meet for a round of golf, having oh. not seen each other for a while? Wow. Uh, I just thought he'd be interested to know that Norm Foster wrote two plays exploring the different conversations on a golf course. Norm huh. Foster must be a golfer as well as a, a wonderful playwright. Well, maybe. He I, must I, be. I, I do not know. But, yes. Um, sure. Uh, well, uh, thank <laughs> interesting. you. Interesting. Thank you for sending that. That's yes. interesting. Well, that's from wow. John Turvey, uh, who's the producer of The Ladies Foursome, which is on now in Embro at the Thistle Theater. And if you want tickets, they're only $25 because the show runs November, uh, Well, t- what's today? The 12th that well, this day comes out. Yeah, so it's just this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are the only remaining plays you got to go see right. them the and it's 14th a small, 15th and 16th it's at the old embro town hall so it's a very small intimate stage small intimate theater there are limited seats so for a great price like this and only three shows left make sure you go in and go this weekend because it's going to be a lot of fun yeah thistle-theater.com is their website you can buy tickets there call the box office 25 bucks 25 bucks. What a great theater. night out. Yeah. yeah. And if you're thinking it's about, oh, I don't know, it's about golf. I don't like golf. No, it's not, it's not about golf. No. It's about secrets and confessions and love and sex and children and everything in between set against the background of a golf course. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. That's how it works. It's perfect. Sounds fun. Go to the show. This is due to underwhelming demand, the Donald Trump of podcasts. We're not going <laughs> no, anywhere anytime nope. soon. That's Please don't do- compare us to him. <laughs> yes, we are. Please don't. Somehow oh. more popular than ever. Yes. Now more popular yes. than ever. <laughs> well, you could say that maybe. I don't, yeah, know. There you I don't go. know if that's true about us, though. <laughs> <laughs> but Donald is. That's true. My goodness. And in Embro, by the way, where the Thistle Theater is. Yes. Yes. Santa Claus seems to be more popular than ever. Oh, okay. Well, it's about that time of year. No bell on that one? Fine. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that was a oh, piddly, bell didn't... piddly there, ding. Yeah, there. Yeah. That's a better one. Sorry. Okay. That's yeah. a better one. <laughs> there, because in Embro, and I asked someone who lives there, you know, what is the population of Embro? Mm. 
It's not and, that big. No, mm. no. She said uh, 800, not including cows. So Okay. <laughs> so maybe another not 800 with cows? cows. Yeah. <laughs> 1,600 so, with cows? But, it's, you know, it's growing. There's new subdivisions. So I'm going to guess there's maybe about 1,000 embroners. Embro. Embronians. Embronians. Oh, it's more fun to say embroners. Embroners. Yeah. Embronites. <laughs> Embronites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there are two women who seem like they're spearheading uh, a campaign to win a contest just in time for Christmas. Oh. Which will win everyone in town swag bags and a whole community barbecue next summer and all kinds of stuff from Broil King via home hardware uh-huh. and it's Shelly and Tammy who are spearheading this uh, endeavor to get every single home in Embro a 12 foot tall inflatable Santa Claus <gasps> yes <laughs> yes there is a street in Toronto and I think it's near my step family's street actually and they every house has a 12 foot inflatable Santa mm-hmm. and they all put them up on the same day and it's like a tourist thing now. Well, tourists or locals. And you just yeah. drive down and you see that everybody has a 12-foot inflatable Santa. It's awesome. Yes. And Why I is recall, that awesome? What's awesome about that? It's just kind of cool that like they all do it together. Are and, they all the same Santas? Yes. Yep. That's not awesome. That's yeah. really boring. <laughs> <laughs> but they all have it. Like everyone's participating. It's, it's a community it's a, thing. Make, that doesn't make it better it's it a, is a weird it, spectacle to see when you're not expecting it and realize yeah, why does guess, every house have inflatable this santas santa? to me are sort of you know <laughs> pardon this this is just my personal view mm-hmm. slightly to moderately to maybe a lot tacky <laughs> yeah but they're but like it's inflatables when in general <laughs> Okay, I thought that about inflatables, and I still kind of do, but I broke down and bought one for Halloween. Oh, you have one? (laughs) Not a Santa. For Halloween, I bought a pumpkin, like several pumpkins. It's like an eight-foot-long pumpkin inflatable thing. The kids keep telling me, as I mentioned on our live show, that our Halloween decorations suck. Well, you didn't have any. I have some. Luca was Luca's lying. That's not, I have some. (laughs) <laughs> Luca, liar! He's just a little kid He's using little children kid. of life. <laughs> a child. I have some, but it's maybe not as many as he has. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway, we got an inflatable this year. I broke down. I bought an inflatable. So what about for Christmas then? No, we don't have inflatables for that. We have the deer, the li- the light up three piece deer. That's on the. F- that's what we have on the front lawn for Christmas. Like a wicker thing. Uh, I guess, but it's made of light. Like it's all the lights. Intertwined. Oh, I don't understand yeah, I why people wicker. put deer out on their front yards at Christmas. It makes no sense. <laughs> you to don't me. understand anything. I don't. Anyway, I, I don't think understand the Santa that. thing. I think the Santa thing's a great idea. I hope Embro wins. What do they have to do for this Santa? Thing? Right. Well, I find it a little bit weird that it is a, like a, a, a brand store sanctioned contest. A genius way to get. To, to sell more Santa Claus. Yes. Well, that's true. Because you're saying everybody has to buy one in order to win this contest. Yeah. Right. And they're like $100 each. Whoa. And I How talked tall to. That's They're seems $99 cheap. plus tax. Yeah. Oh. And when you want everyone, like, if you're thinking their contest idea is, you know, get your whole street to enter for your street to win. Right. But they want the town, so they need like a thousand of these things. Mm. I talked to Tammy on the phone, and she says, oh, yeah, I probably bought about 15 of them. She's like, in the same for breath as saying they're only a hundred dollars. I said only a hundred dollars for one, maybe, $1, but times fifteen, exactly. Wow! Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Because they really want to for... win, and their plan so... is that these things also light up so that their Santa Claus parade in Embro is uh, in the evening on November thirtieth, and okay. they want to make sure the entire town has one set up. Oh. by that evening, so it can be this giant spectacle. And a tourist so, attraction. Is it? So yes. hold on. I is thought the really? prize was everybody received a Santa. That, but to enter, they all have to buy no, you a gotta, Santa? You have to buy one. Yeah. Oh, Genius market not... employee. Yes. What do they <laughs> win then? Uh, I think Broil King throws your neighborhood a barbecue and they give you some, you know, accessories and what is the Broil King with, swag. What is the hook with Broil King? Did they make the Santas? I don't know. Why oh, is it a barbecue King, company? I don't know. Broil King's working with Home Hardware and Home yes. Hardware is where you have to buy the Santas from. And both companies are making bank. Yes. <laughs> that seems, I don't like that now. I don't like that now. <laughs> 
Now you don't I like don't it. Like no. It's I not thought certain. everybody won a Santa. Mm-hmm. No. no. I was I originally that was the prize. It's well, cer- and I was originally interested in their story because two winters ago, or no, it was last winter, in Halifax, there was one street in Coal Harbor that kind of spontaneously did this. Okay. And there was no contest associated with. And then they they all weren't the exact same Santa, but every house on a street had a Santa. And then they set up an entrance to the street and were taking donations, and it was a big charitable event. Well, that's nice. And it sort of all just kind of happened, and it was a lovely story. Sure. I kind of thought that's what was happening in Embro, but now it is this brand store-sanctioned yeah, <laughs> bonanza. It does, does kind of go against the spirit of giving and all of that stuff that happens mm-hmm. at Christmas. I think when so you get a barbecue <laughs> in the middle of the winter if you have enough. No, Santas? they'll throw you barbecue next summer. Oh, yeah. I guess <laughs> you don't Nobody like this at this. all now, no, do you? This doesn't sound. I don't I'm know why more, they're doing this. I'm more intrigued with a with, with an entire this town is... where every single home has a 12 foot lit up. <laughs> Inflatable sand. Yes. Now I'm intrigued, like, and you think it sucks. We're going to start our own um, our own contest here, where if you buy a sponsorship and you buy enough of them, we will give you uh, I don't know some shout outs. It's more than more than that. More. Well, shout-outs. that's what they're buying is a well, shout out. Exactly. Like, what's the point of this? I'll I'm throw you a barbecue. That, that the woman who owns inflatable <laughs> decorations hates I'll bring this. my broken Master Chef barbecue, whatever it is, and Chef Master cheap no name barbecue, uh-huh. and I'll bring it to your street. <laughs> and do what? Get Jeremy to, to barbecue make for some everyone? Hot dogs yeah. From Costco. yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cook up some wieners. No yeah. Thanks. No, like, I, love, I love I exactly. love Rachel. It's well, I love that you hate this idea, Rachel, and you own inflatables. And Dave, well, you hate it. inflatables, but now you kind of love the idea. I'm sold. I think. Why will, do you uh, like it? I like the fact that look, I don't, I don't understand. It's only good for home hardware. When's the last really, time you look, were in Embro? I don't Embro. really care about the contest. I'm more interested in seeing an entire town where everybody yes. has that inflatable Santa. Well, now I like intrigued. that idea. I yeah, think it's I a think reason to a go reason. to Embro now. Yes. Uh, sure. Yeah, I agree. Well, you can't but come I... because you're miserable about it anyway. <laughs> I, wa- I wasn't when I was talking about, you know, the street in Toronto. And I think, it's, a, I think no. it's cool you... that they're all decked out the same way. And that's, you know, it's a whole community thing. But I don't like that Home Hardware started this contest just, yeah, to, you're in a full just on to sell more snit things. Now, so you can't come. <laughs> What? That's actually genius of home hardware. Like yeah, they probably yeah, saw really the great. Toronto example. They saw the mm-hmm. Cole Harbour example and thought, "How can we swoop in the middle and make some money off <laughs> yes. this?" And they figured it out. Yeah, and people genius. are playing along. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you go, in, what bro. What happened to contests where no purchase was necessary? <laughs> This is like a ton of purchases are necessary. We're too really? stupid to do the skill testing question now. You really are <laughs> yes. in a snit, aren't you? <laughs> This is Due to Underwhelming Demand, the podcast with Dave, Rachel, and Foreman. And this podcast is brought to you by ENP Equine. A brand new sponsor. That's right. Thank you very much. E N P and like the not and N P E N P. Yes. Equine in uh, Thamesford. This is Erin, and she does massage and nerve release for horses. Foreman, this is right up your alley. Foreman. I'm not a horse. <laughs> no, but for this it's not for I, me. I, Foreman, I have you dealt you would... with um, equine massage right. and nerve release? professionals before at your farm? Oh, my farm? mother certainly has. Yeah? Far okay. more than investing in those in, in, in her own children. Ah, okay, she would so. invest in those for the horses because <laughs> right. it absolutely seems to work because the horses is always okay. prancing around, super happy, oh. light, <laughs> loose, relaxed, just stretched. Okay. Just about it and away what, were, what were you like as a kid? Not... Not prancing around happy. I didn't have improved circulation okay. in an right. improved immune All response, right. an improved <laughs> lymph drainage, thus minimizing any swelling, mm. an improved respiration and digestion, and sedative and pain relief. I didn't get any of that. Okay. Actually, what? all of those things, th- that's the benefits of the equine massage exactly. and, and nerve exactly. release. That it's good to be a horse. Erin yes. Odrowski provides. Um, she says, if you're interested in investing in the longevity and wellness of your equine friend and athlete, uh, this is for you. Also, if you have a horse who would benefit from increased range of motion, reduced recovery time, and overall relaxation, maybe equine massage and nerve release is for you. And Erin provides that. Uh, it, from her, I, I guess she goes to your farm though, but she's in Thamesford. So mm-hmm. if you're in that in that area, I'm sure she would travel to you. 
Of course. Wow. Yeah. I, and, and I, I know nothing about, um, uh, equine, you know, anything. Uh, I massage don't either. and nerve relief. I, like I know nothing about it. how you learn how to do that. How you can, uh, you know, how to how to approach it. Like, is the horse a little uptight? What are you doing sure. here? Who yeah. are you? That's I right. don't know you, but I mean, obviously, it does make sense. I think they are. It makes sense for when you're in competitions with your horse. I mean, the horse is doing an awful lot of work. Like oh, yeah. any high level athletic competition would be for sure. a human. So sure, yeah, they need you know some. Um, recovery time they need mm-hmm. increased range of motion things like that as you would with a high level competitive athlete that's a human being sure Got all it. of these things sound like i would benefit from them actually yes you would <laughs> uh, i wish someone would come and do that for me but uh erin only works with horses unfortunately <laughs> for me <laughs> so you can contact her erin odrowski at e o d r o w s k at gmail.com or and we'll put that in the in the show notes here and, yep, and on the uh, if you're watching on YouTube it's on there uh, 226-377-0244 Aaron Odrowski uh, for ENP Equine This is due to underwhelming demand it's Dave Rachel and Foreman this is the podcast that's like the leaves that fall in your yard mm. uh, it happens whether you like it or not so <laughs> that's true <laughs> The podcast happens whether you like are. it or not. Here we are. You know what else happens whether you like it or not? Your children will inevitably, at some point, get lice. <laughs> That's oh. the best segue ever. Is That's it? The one. Well, well, well. That's the one. I thought that was very obvious, but okay, you can give I don't that know to how me. How you tied that in, but it worked. <laughs> but- <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we've been dealing with uh, lice over here. It's gone now, thankfully, and mm. I, thank God, never got it. Um, but my kids got lice, and we knew um, another family that they had lice, and so I was checking my kids. And that's the only reason I was checking, because I knew that they had played with these children, and I thought, oh, I better, I better check them. But if you've had lice... And I think every family will get it at some point because I remember getting it as a kid myself. I feel, the more you say that word, I feel like you're I just have head it now. Yeah, I mean, I your know, head I'm itches sorry. like crazy. You're yeah. going to be itchy this whole segment. Yeah, I don't even have but, any hair left, and I'm still itchy. I know, I know it's awful. Mm. Um, so, uh, and uh, so, so everybody gets it at some point, I think. And they love clean I, hair, Dave, as you are freshly showered. Yes, I they love clean show. hair. Do they? Yes. Yeah, clean hair is what lice like. Um, oh. I, I didn't know that. This fun. is this is all very. I mean, I we didn't really have any. Uh, we had we had an issue at camp, and then it turned out that it was uh, overblown. The issue, oh, and, you know, but, lice. Well, that's yeah, where it starts. There was a uh, an egg that was, you know, and the, the girl. The, you did that at camp. They're trained to look for lice, and I think they yes. spotted something. And so we immediately we had just got home. We had to drive all the way back and take mm. you know because you can't be here. No. And then we took her to an expert the next day who said there was one uh, <laughs> broken egg with nothing in it. Mm. That was it. Nothing in her hmm. hair. Like okay, well that's uh, good. Come through. Well, we and we good. needed to have proof to get her back to camp. So mm-hmm. it all worked out. But so no you had lice. To, yeah. No Last lice. time we so, had lice, it came from day camp, and it was ugh. cowboy day, and everyone was sharing cowboy hats. Oh, oh boy. why do they have cowboy yeah, days? Yeah, that's at camp? a bad idea. <laughs> no yeah. hats. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, in our house, we were all sharing hairbrushes until now. Mm. So we don't do that anymore. <laughs> and every day they all get sterilized. I put them all in boiling water every oh, wow. single day after wow. every use. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, Hardcore. Because, uh, well, you have to. I just just in case. I mean, it's not going to hurt. Uh, yeah. So I worked at camp. Fun fact. I was the lifeguard at camp for a summer. And uh, this is a camp I worked as a counselor before and whatever. And, and you were the so lice I, coordinator. I was the, the lice checker. Yeah, I had to be trained and check for lice. And they paid extra for that? Yeah. No, you get a little extra bonus No, for that? you don't. Which is, which is, <laughs> but I learned a lot. And, you know, there's some kids that have very little lice, but some I just open the hair and you can see all the eggs. And I'm like, okay, you. I don't even really need to check because I can clearly see that you have lice. Um so I, I knew how to check. So I know how to check for lice, which if, if you don't look it up, because if, if, you, if you hear that somebody in your child's life, classroom, whatever, might have lice, I suggest you just check their hair every couple days, just, you know, in case you 
in case they get it, because if you're not checking, then it'll just be rampant once you finally catch it. Yeah. Um, so I knew that they were playing with some kids who had it. And so I was just checking their hair. And then I finally one night found it in Kendall's hair first. And I thought, oh, my God, well, this is our life now for the next week or two. And it was. I spent that entire weekend, 12 hours, six hours each day, picking through hair. 12 Ooh. hours. And wow. I'm like going through it almost strand by strand, trying to find every little bit. I was treating the hair. We spent so much money. Jeremy had to go. As soon as I found it, I said, you got to go to Shoppers Drug Mart and buy the lice shampoo. So he does. He goes. He gets the shampoo. And we use the medicated stuff because I am not messing around. I want this to work and I want it gone quickly. Okay. So, some we, people were like, we... use olive oil. Use coconut mm. oil. Just smother it with everything. No, we're using the medicated shit and we're getting it done. Okay, like can we, are... we can we go backwards though when when because I feel like <clears throat> when you instructed uh, Jeremy to go and 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 buy the shampoo and when you discovered that uh, you had lice, mm -hmm. I feel like you you seem very calm, but I feel like when this was actually happening, <laughs> I just want to know: can you give us an indication of um, what it was like, how you reacted? I was upstairs with Kendall, and she's like, my head's itchy. Can you please check it again? And I said, <laughs> okay. I said, I checked you like two days ago. Um, anyway, so then I found it, and I'm like, okay, you do have it. And she's like, oh. And then I yelled downstairs. I'm like, Kendall has lice. This is our life now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeremy runs upstairs. What? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I need you to go to Shoppers. <laughs> Yes. Now. <laughs> so he immediately goes to Shoppers Drug Mart, gets the shampoo from the pharmacist, comes home. We treat Kendall. The next day, I'm picking her hair and whatever. And then I and then I was like, I found another another live one. So I I don't think I used enough. Turns out it will like it has a residual effect and it will work over a, a seven days. But anyway, I sent him back to get more. She has so much hair. Kendall has so much hair. It's so thick. And so the second day, Jeremy goes back, same pharmacist. And he goes, weren't you here yesterday? And he and Jeremy says, yeah. And the pharmacist just says, I am so sorry. <laughs> How much is it? When and you then buy the, the shampoo, day, what is it? Just a little bit? Or? It's a little bottle. It's like a, I don't oh. know. what. It's like a mini shampoo bottle, basically, of shampoo. And you're supposed to use either half or or maybe a whole bottle and I and Kendall has so much hair I don't think I saturated it enough I think I needed more than one bottle for her um Julia's hair would be fine with one one bottle or half a bottle but Kendall's is so thick um so I sent him back the second day so then the third day I find lice on Julia and I'm like okay back you go all the way back to shoppers so he goes back to sh I'm like you know what just get two bottles this time cuz I'm probably going to get it too get so six just buy whatever so he goes back the third day and this guy's like you know what same pharmacist he's like you seem like a really nice man but I hope I don't ever see you again <laughs> I feel so bad for you, Jeremy. Jeremy's like, yeah, thank you. And at that point, we had bought out the store of all the lice shampoo. So he had to get a second kind, a different kind of lice shampoo mm. that was a little more expensive. But whatever. We, we I'm like, we'll take what we can get. So now yeah. that shoppers was out of lice shampoo for that day because we purchased all of it. <laughs> So we do everybody's hair. I'm picking every day. Like, it just ruins your entire week because I spend hours after school all weekend long trying to get every single... Because if you don't get all the eggs out of the hair, they hatch and then it just comes back. You need to make sure you get every single one out of the hair or or they they come back. It doesn't go away. Are you... I'm it's really ridiculous. been. I've really been biting my tongue because... Okay. How are you picking them out of your hair? With your fingers? Yeah. Okay. Did you know that there is a special lice comb? Yeah, I have that. It doesn't get all of them out. But when all you use, you use a, a shitload of conditioner, so the hair is nice yes, and Ashley easy to comb me. through. Your wife. Exactly. And then you use the comb, and that's all you need because they will eventually all come out, and you don't have to buy any of that shampoo because yeah, like it doesn't on, do that. It's much. like they're on the uh, the you know the big slide at uh, yeah, at but the, <laughs> but the nits would go. Some of them were so small, the comb still doesn't. And I bought the extra. Uh, so the shampoo comes with a plastic comb, which is crap. Yes. I bought the metal comb. Uh, I bought a separate metal comb 
because that the the teeth of it are are more together <laughs> and even that the the knits it will get the lice out if you comb the lice but not all the eggs and the eggs are so stuck on the hair you have to pull them with your fingernails Sometimes, that's how you know yeah. that's how you know it's lice but we had that lice lady come in once and mm-hmm. she she was like this is all I'm doing this is conditioner and this is the comb that's it <laughs> yeah i yeah okay that's fine I mean, if if the comb misses any, then I guess you're just not getting them out. You just but. do it again. That's just, yeah. That I, sounds simpler than going and it, and, and, uh, and annoying and the pharmacist and shoppers drug more. Two people had told me that uh, to use the conditioner, but I'm skeptical that it gets out absolutely every single knit. So okay. I'm so going in, so, and so I had the whole setup. I had my ring light. <laughs> I had like reading glasses on, which are magnifying, so I could see every strand of hair. Like I am going through this with a fine tooth comb because yeah, I I'm making literally. sure it's gone. In case yes. anybody didn't know, that's where the term nitpicker comes Knit from. Picker. <laughs> This is Due to Underwhelming Demand, the podcast with Dave, Rachel, and Foreman. And this podcast uh, is brought to you by, has been brought to you by the Thistle Theater. Thank you to them. And yes. ENP Equine. Thank you to that new sponsor. Aaron, and then our yes. friend, Melissa Photography, who also is sponsoring the uh, the podcast this week because she was so kind to come out and, and help us at our live show. Yeah, yeah, Melissa was there and she took a bunch. She offered as soon as we announced our live show, she said, I'd love to come and take photos of the event for you. And she did, which was so kind. Uh, we're going to share some of those photos. So if you're at the event, maybe you'll see yourself in some of them. And then she took a few photos of us afterwards because, very kind. you know, we needed some updated things. So thank you very much, Melissa Photography. Uh, she's got lots going on. She does mini sessions. She does weddings. She does. I think she does wedding planning as she well. She does event planning. Yeah, that's it's Melissa VPP for photography and event planning she'll do the whole thing Mm. yeah she does maternity newborn family wedding equine photography there you go there you go her and Aaron should team up equine massage and photography how good were those horse pictures look after they got a good equine massage exactly Exactly. (laughs) so melissa Melissa vpp.com or on facebook and instagram at melissa vpp check out her um her portfolio she's great well, I hate having my picture taken, as you I know. know you Just do. absolutely despise it. Yeah. But Melissa was delightful. Yes. She, she uh, made it very easy for you guys. She made it very easy. And uh, so I, uh, I thank Melissa for coming and doing that for us. That absolutely. was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you can get a hold of us, uh, by the way, if you would like to be a, a, a sponsor of this fine podcast. Uh, just uh, email us, DaveRachelForeman at gmail.com. Go to our website, underwhelming.ca. You can contact us there now, too. Yes, you can sign up for our newsletter, get some exclusives behind the scenes. Dave, Dave's written a blog on our website, underwhelming.ca. Uh, you can check that out there. And, uh, and if you sign up for our newsletter, you'll get some random, hey, here's our new episode or here's some behind the scenes stuff or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's all you there. can leave us a voice memo. It's it'll be floating in the bottom right corner. Easy to do that. It's a one click voice memo on underwhelming.ca. Yeah. So that'd be great in the bottom left corner. That's is a the, cool feature that they have. So. Yeah. Bottom left is a link to buy me a coffee. Should you sure. like to contribute? Yeah, if you want to, to do that, that too, that's well. awesome. That yes. would be great. Yeah. Um, we do have many many comments, many leftovers from the live show. Oh. Um, like Jerry, who said it was great. So nice to see everyone. And it was so nice to see Jerry and put a face to the Instagram name we always mm. see. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you to the uh, all the kinsmen also who hosted oh gosh, us yeah. that day. Yeah. yeah, Denise said it was a great way to spend a Saturday morning. We Aww. had some good laughs, and the pancakes were awesome. Thank great. you. They look good. I didn't have any pancakes, but I the know, maple I... beer was really good. Oh, that oh, was good. It was yeah, it was, was really good. good. That was mm-hmm. good. Uh, Aaron said it was excellent. Great show. Uh, keep it up. I would definitely come to another live show. Oh, <laughs> nice. okay. Right. I don't know if we're going to do another live show or not. I don't know about not. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Tr- I think this is Trudy. Trudster on Instagram said, thank you for being an awesome trio. The world didn't know it needed. <laughs> So oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, let me write that one down for next uh-huh. week. The podcast that the world that, yeah, that the world didn't, didn't know. know it needed. Yeah, that it, yeah, yes, I'll exactly. Write yeah. I will write that down. Yeah, uh, <laughs> another person on Instagram uh, simply wrote a live pat podcast. So the radio. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, not exactly. Uh, yeah. Kind not of. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of, but not um, exactly. Live in person. Yeah. It's still a podcast. It's not radio. That's mm-hmm. right. Erica yeah. Vincent, uh, the realtor, uh, mm-hmm. who was unable to attend, uh, says, I hope you guys are able to do it again sometime. So, ah, uh, well. We'll see. With that in mind, I have a little something for you guys. Oh, you do? Oh. What's that? Yeah. Well, uh, last week. In a bag. I, I, yeah, I heard about it last week about how I didn't. Um, anyway, long story short, uh, on this podcast, I talked about my trip to uh, Watkins Glen. Yes. Yeah. Where you- uh, I discovered that they were selling off these uh, misprinted t shirts that mm-hmm. say Watkins Glen. Uh, Glen on them. And right. I had to have one. They had, uh, for $10, you can get a hoodie. What, uh, I th- uh, we got. We bought a bunch of hoodies in my family. You were and wearing my- one at the live show. If yes. you see our pictures at underwhelming.ca, that's you'll right. see Dave in the Watkins Glen hoodie. I'll wear my, <laughs> yes. I'll wear my nice, one of my nice hoodies. And, uh, but the friends we were with, uh, they bought lots of T-shirts. Five bucks for a T-shirt. I didn't even really bother buying a T-shirt. Amazing. We just bought. Anyway, turns out you guys were whining at me last week. Why didn't you bring me back one? Yeah. Right. I never even thought to buy you guys. I could go guys. for a hoodie, actually. Yeah, I well, I never even thought to buy any. <laughs> I'd like uh, the whole tracksuit. <laughs> yeah, you want the whole. Anyway, it turns bucks. out my friends, uh, John and Jan, bought a whack of T-shirts, <laughs> and in the process... They needed some new rags, did they? They, um... Yeah, look at there. Oh, okay. yeah, very nice. They bought some um, sizes that didn't particularly work for their needs. Okay. So it looks like... <laughs> there you go. Well, there was a pink one you're holding up and a gray one you're holding okay. up. I have one so for have two uh, t-shirts. each of you. Oh, hey. thank hey. you. There you go. You got your own watch. Why didn't you bring that last week? We don't they see didn't know. whoever. They, they heard about it. They didn't know either. Oh, so they I, came, it's from them. They you said didn't some, have it. They said something to me, and I said, uh, you know, like afterwards they said, we got a couple that we don't know what we're going to do with. Mm. Do you want them? Sure. So, I'll give them yes. to, da- to Rachel and Foreman. I bought them off of them, and they're yours. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Happy birthday. Merry Christmas. Okay. And, <laughs> this is your uh, only gift Happy Mother's year. Day and Father's Day. <laughs> sure. Okay. You're not getting another thing from me. Mm-hmm. Well, now you're going to have to ship it. them to us. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know when I will get them to you. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get we'll them see. one of these days. <laughs>